वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ एडवांस माइक्रोसॉफ्ट 365 कोर्स आई एम मंजीत रावत योर ऑनलाइन इंस्ट्रक्टर इन प्रीवियस क्लास ऑफ माइक्रोसॉफ्ट 365 कोर्स वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट हाउ टू सिंक्रोनाइज यूजर्स फ्रॉम ऑन प्रोमाइसिस एडी टू एजर एक्ट डायरेक्टरी विद द हेल्प ऑफ एजर एडी कनेक्ट टूल राइट सो वी सक्सेसफुली कंप्लीटेड द प्रैक्टिकल पार्ट बट वी शुड नो अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ कंपोनेंट्स व्हिच आर अवेलेबल इन एडी कनेक्ट टूल as a office 365 engineer it's our responsibility we should know about the services which are involved in uh, uh, azure ad connect tools so in this class i'm going to give you the complete information about the components or services of azure ad connect tool so let's move ourselves to the blackboard screen and discuss about the services and component but before that If you are new on my YouTube channel, if you are watching my video first time, so please do subscribe, because Teach Me Cloud is a single technical training based YouTube channel that give you hundred percent live practical based video series without skip any step. So let me move ourselves to the blackboard screen and discuss about the concept of Azure AD Connect. Like practically, we talked about. Uh, how we can synchronize the users from on premises ad to azure ad like this is the panel uh, you can say that this is azure ad dashboard you will find the azure ad dashboard by using intra.microsoft.com it will redirect you on intra site at intra admin so which is also considered as azure active directory and we already established on premises domain like this is our on premises adds that we install on i think windows server 2016 right and we created multiple users like uh, i think gcp user telnet user and tata user we successfully synchronized these users to azure active directory portal right so i hope you guys are able to understand about the practical or procedure how we can synchronize the users so i'm just going to pin the uh, attach the previous class recording in i button you just need to click on i button and it will redirect you on page of practical of uh, synchronizing user but the agenda of this particular session in this class i'm going to help you to understand about the components uh, those components can help us to manage our azure ad connect v2 yes i'm talking about the version 2 number of services are available i'm going to start from the very basic about protocols yes it's mandatory for us we must need to know about which protocols are responsible to synchronize the users second password hash synchronization this is another service password hash sync number third password write back right and uh, pass through authentication in our azure ad connect we will find the feature of uh, sso single sign on we are able to find the option of adfs another services are also involved like as uh, custom user synchronization and custom upn suffix you can also consider as a alternate upn suffix so these all are the components that we need to know in case of managing azure ad connect so these services you will find once you install the azure ad connect tool on on premises domain controller right so i'm going to give you the complete information the list that i mentioned like eight different list uh, eight different services are involved in case of azure ad connect and as a office 365 engineer it's our responsibility we should know about the usage of these points are these components the work of these components so let's start with very basic like as what are the uh, protocols are responsible to synchronize the users because sometime interviewer will ask you question like as uh, when whenever we synchronize the users from on premises ad to azure ad 
can you please help me to understand about which types of protocols are involved or which types of protocol are responsible to synchronize the users so we can say that https right i hope you know about uh, the port number for https 443 and second one is service bus these two different protocols are responsible to synchronize our users from on premises ad to azure active directory right if any interviewer will ask you question related to this so you can describe about the service bus and https two important protocols are responsible to synchronize the users second a uh, service which is password hash synchronization let's start to understand about the concept of password hash synchronization so guys whenever we create the user on on premises ad it's mandatory you need to provide the password right without password we are unable to create any user on on premises ad it's mandatory to provide the password so whenever we create user like we created a user with name of gcp and you assign the password of maybe abc at the rate 123 this is the password for gcp user and uh, password has can help us to synchronize our on premises ad user password in the format of has and transfer to the azure active directory means the same user you synchronize with azure ad means the password has responsible to synchronize your password in the format of has it means that if you assign the license to this particular user and you are trying to open the same user on office365.office.com portal then definitely you need to use the same password that you configured on on premises ad this is the actual usage of password has synchronization i hope you understand about the concept second option is related to the password write back right this is another option password write back as per the name suggests the meaning of password write back if you reset the password right if you reset the password of your cloud user not cloud the users that you synchronize over a cloud and now you are trying to reset the password from as you ready so password write back can synchronize back password write back can synchronize back your password that you reset over a azure ad portal to on premises means once you activate the password write back service through the azure ad connect tool we are able to reset the user's password that we synchronize from on premises ad to azure ad right but make sure your password write back service must be activated the another important point is related to pass through authentication so it works just like as a password hash synchronization but the pass through authentication can enhance or increase the speed of synchronizing enhance the speed of synchronizing your on premises user password to office 365 portal or azure active directory portal and uh, next option is sso let's try to understand about the concept of sso single sign on the meaning of single sign on is related to for example this is our azure ad portal or you can say that uh, office 365 we establish our on premises domain this is local domain right and you know that the local domain is also connected with multiple client computer and number of clients are connected with on premises ad like this so you created a user on on premises like gcp telnet and all you successfully synchronized the entire user to office 365 portal now we are able to use same user id and password to log in our windows 10 our client operating system is that correct my with the help of gcp user we are able to log in our client computer so once you activate the sso single sign on basically it will help you to save some time if you already synchronize gcp user over office 365 portal and you assign the e5 license for uh, accessing the Uh, office 365 uh, tools are office 365 applications means you want to use the same user id and password to log in your mailing services or mailboxes so 
SSO, if you activate the SSO, if you enable the SSO with the help of AD Connect tool, so what exactly happened? You are able to open GCP user in these machines. If, if you log in this machine with the help of GCP and you are trying to open office.com. So in this case, no need to provide user ID and password if the SSO is working properly. Means you need to provide only one time. You need to provide the word only one time user ID and password to log in your client machine. And over a client machine, if you are trying to open Office 365 with the uh, same user, it, you, it will redirect you on the page of mailboxes. So SSO single sign on can help us to save some time. The another point we have a uh, ADFS Active Directory Federation Services. So as per the name suggests, ADFS is also a type of uh, advanced security. We can say that Active Directory Federation Services. In this case, the domain controller that you install on on premises, you need to install ADCS and ADFS role. And after that, you can create a token or security for the authentication. If you are trying to access any application or Office 365 application with the help of on-premises AD user, and you have already activated the ADFS service, then it will provide you high level of security to connect your uh, Office 365 application. The last option, which is correlated to the custom user synchronization as per the name suggests, for example, in on-premises machine, in on-premises AD, you created 25 different users, but you want to synchronize the entire 25 users. You just want to synchronize only 10 users to 365 portal, right? So in this case, we need to create one OU, put the user that you don't want to synchronize with our Office 365 portal and re uh, uh, means re not need reinstall, just re need, uh, reconfigure the Azure AD Connect uncheck the uh, OU, uncheck the organizational unit that you created to put your 20, 15 different user. So I'll show you the practical. This is the common uh, basic video that uh, help you to understand about the concept to prepare yourself for the interview. Uh, but I'll definitely show you the entire practical that I mentioned in this particular uh, uh, session that the number of points that I mentioned in case of Azure Ready Connect, Azure Ready Connect components or services. Custom UPN suffix as per the name suggests, for example, on on-premises domain, you establish a domain with name of class.com, right? The domain that you establish with name of class.com and over Azure portal, you establish a domain with name of cloud.com, right? So your user, your domain, which is available on on-premises, it's a different and over Azure portal is different. So in this case, if we have a different types of domain available in both the location, then custom UPN suffix come into the picture or alternate UPN suffix come into the picture that help us to manage the service. I'll show you the practical, no worry about it. I'll show you the proper practical, how we can configure alternate UPN suffix. Okay guys, so this is all about this session. We'll connect soon, we'll connect tomorrow and discuss more about the advanced Microsoft 365 course, free of cost. And definitely this series will help you to understand each and every Topics, those topics are really important for the Office 365 administrator. So we'll connect tomorrow and discuss more about Microsoft 365 services. Take care. Bye-bye. Do subscribe here on Teach Me Cloud YouTube channel. Bye guys.